Time having arrived, I call the meeting of the Finance Committee of the City Council to order for today, June 5th, 2019. Uh, Councilors, this is our third night, and hopefully we will go through the budget as we did the, the previous couple nights. Uh, and again, I want to thank everybody for limiting their outside questions and focusing more on the budget itself. So hopefully we'll do the same thing this evening and be able to uh, be uh, done with this portion by tonight. Uh, as I had mentioned, I, I believe we're going to go um, tonight and basically ask the council for a motion to forward the, uh, the budget as a whole to the city council and we'll hold a special meeting on the 17th prior to the FinCom meeting to, for, to, for cuts and also to approve the budget. Mr. President, will that be at 6 p.m.? I'm, I'm trying to figure out if it's 6, 6, you know, 6 p.m., 6.15, so perhaps probably 6 p.m. so we have a little more time to, uh, to discuss it as a whole. Thank you. But uh, we'll figure that out as we go along tonight and then announce it at the end. Thank you. Madam Clerk, number one, please. Fire. Michael Williams, Chief. Good, good evening, Chief. Good evening, Councilors. Welcome. Thank you. The microphone is yours. and. Uh, Let's hear it. Thank you. So the Brockton Fire Department is responsible for extinguishing fires, protecting lives and property from fire, providing emergency medical services, fire investigations, code enforcement, public safety education, with a professionally trained and equipped personnel department. The fire department dispatches and responds to a multitude of emergencies and fire alarm calls each year. In 2018, we responded to 26,318 calls. That's an average of just over 72 calls a day, making the Brockton Fire Department the busiest fire department per capita in the state of Massachusetts. We handle this large number of responses with an average of 31 firefighters on duty at all times, working out of six fire stations on nine fire companies with one incident command vehicle. All calls are received, dispatched from our fire alarm office, which is manned by a minimum of two fire alarm operators at all times. We have a dedicated fire prevention bureau that handles all fire investigations and inspections throughout the city. Our training division maintains all firefighter training and education on a daily basis. They also train and educate in schools, high rises, and with many other outside organizations. We have two full-time mechanics who work extremely hard at maintaining all fire department vehicles, apparatus, and equipment. I would like to thank all the men and women of my department who are dedicated and perform their jobs professionally every day. I would like to acknowledge my administrative staff, Suzanne Backoff and Maureen Atten, for not only their hard work every day, but also their assistance in preparing this budget. I would also be remiss if I did not mention my appreciation for all of the cooperation that my department receives from all of the other departments within the city. All the staff here at City Hall, the building department, the DPW, the IT department, any time I ask, they are always there. So I'd like to thank them as well. And with that, I'll take any questions on the budget. Thank you, Chief. Um, before we go on to questions, I just wanted to share that I did receive a call from Councillor Izak. She's running a little late because she's got something else going on this afternoon. Councillor Ian Erie. Thank you, um, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Chief. How are you? Good evening. Very well. Thank you for being here this evening, and uh, thank you and uh, your men and women of the Brockton Fire Department for all that they do. Truly appreciate it, and they keep us safe each and every day. Um, a question I have, and I don't think it's really registered in the book, but, you know, one time I can always recall that um, Chief Francis used to mention what it actually cost us to respond to, um, well, we are the first responder, but responding to each and every call and I think he used to used to say it was close to about 10 million dollars of, of other calls other than those that were actual emergencies actual emergencies and are we still in that type of situation where you would you still 
project that as well, or would you say it's even a little bit higher now today? Because we are, we are the first, I just saw something this evening coming up on Warren Avenue, and who's there first is the fire department before the ambulance arrives. So um, are we in that same bracket still? Of yes, Council. It's, it's hard to predict the exact amount because right. it's not necessarily strictly, a, say, a, a fire alarm box that was pulled for no reason. Right. And you count that as a false alarm. Okay. There are all types of calls that we get there, and maybe our assistance was not needed. Um, but, but we don't ever want to deter anyone from calling. So right. I don't right. really keep that, that figure in the, in, you know, at the front of my yeah, yeah. presentation, but, um, no, I hear, I hear you. Again, I, I did mention the, the average is 72 calls a day. So right. if you figure, I don't know how you would figure those, the, the payroll for that amount of right. calls, you know? Yeah. It, it, I mean, it's, it's still an astronomical amount of money that, you know, monies that could be used in other such ways for years as, as well, to be truthful with you. But I mean, it has to be used there. So, um, and there's no other way around it that, that it is what it is. And right. we're always the first responder. So, okay. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Council Cruz. Thank you. Thank you, Chief being here. Uh, two line items I wanted to ask about. Um, under fire purchase of services, with the line O contract services, which I assume is outside contract services. A um, couple of years ago, it was 16,000, then went up to 159 last year, and it's budgeted for 227.93. What is that? I'm on page 142. I don't know what your page is at. Account 531.700. Yes. I apologize. I don't have an answer for that question. Just before we get, if you can just email me and let me know what that is. And then down under fire capital outlay, mm -hmm. capital projects, 150,000. Is that going to be trucks or is that going to be? That's a, a third roof project. Um, in last year's budget, I had requested to do, redo three roofs for the fire stations. They did station one, three, and we were supposed Two to. Two streets for me. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, North Main Street. Uh, Central Street, I'm sorry, Central Station on Pleasant Street. Yeah. And then we were, we were looking to do Station 6 up on the west side, and we ran a little short on that one, so I put it back in the budget. And you mean the headquarters where your office is? Correct. And thankfully, that was put back in this year's budget for that third okay. move. And then I thought I heard the mayor mention something about trucks this year. Are you going to be? Uh, we have a grant application in for one. Um, I put in a second one because two out of the, the six engines are in uh, one is a 22 year old piece of apparatus, the other is a 23. Um, and that would be engine company five on the west side and engine company seven up on Kerry Hill. Those are my two eight most aging pieces of apparatus. So if I had my choice, those would be the two I'd replace first. So again, um, through the grant and then one in my budget. And unfortunately, um, we did not receive. So one. we don't have any in the budget, but you have grant applications in. <coughs> looks like <coughs> Mr. Clarkson is going to give us some information here. Good evening, Mr. President, and members of the council. So the two pumpers that the chief had requested, uh, we anticipate sending a, a loan order before you uh, to borrow the money to purchase those. And uh, what the mayor had mentioned is because there's sufficient revenue coming in to the ambulance receipts account uh, through the contract with Brewster, we anticipate paying the principal and interest for that borrowing out of the ambulance receipts account so that it does not have to directly impact uh, the, the general fund or the fire department budget. So we do anticipate putting forth uh, for this fiscal year for 2020 that purchase, but not using general funds to support it. Is that an enterprise account? Uh, no, the ambulance receipts is a revolving fund. A revolving account, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pre uh, Chairman. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Council. Council Duran Court. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, Chief, it's good to see you. In regard to the numbers, uh, the mic is off. Uh, in regard to the numbers, how many firefighters that we have as a whole, in terms of like all of them? Currently, uh, I think it's 177 firefighters. My total department is a total number of 194 members. So 194, you said, right? And as we speak, you got 177? Firefighters. So right. do you have any guys going in now as we speak? That includes the 11 I have in, in drill school right now. Oh, interesting. 
So yeah. the number that you're supposed to have in order for your department to uh, to work effectively should be 194, correct? That's what has been budgeted over the past several years. Okay. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but fortunately this year, um, every year, I should say our high watermark, let's say, in 2006 was a total number of 213 personnel. That was cut to 194 several years ago, so that's what we budget for. We kept those 19 positions in the budget, and what they're called is vacant, unfunded positions. They're in the budget every year. We, they're just not funded. Luckily, this year, um, through the chief financial officer and the mayor, we were able to uh, reestablish, if you will, seven of those 19. So, I mean, it's kind of like somewhat scary, though, because I think your department is one of the most important department that we have in the city, especially when it's come down to fire. But, uh, you know, it seems like you've been doing an excellent job in regard to uh, the number that you have right now. So, um, you, you know, although I do not have, you know, the opportunity to, to say that I think we should put it to 194, <coughs> but I hope someday we will be able to bring it to that level. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Thank Chief. You. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Fowell, followed by Nicastro. Yeah, and mine is uh, hopefully a simple question. It's on page 140, Chief. There are 10 firefighter vacancies, and we're using a figure of 42320 for the annual salary. But below that, we have adding seven firefighters, and we're using the annual figure of 63897. So I just want to make sure that we aren't shorting ourselves with the 10 the 10 vacancies because it's a much lower number than the figure being used for the seven vacancies. Well, Council, we figured them on entry level salaries. Yeah. So it would be a little less. Um, <clears throat> but, but, if, but if seven are at 63,897, which would be entry level, then how about the other 10, <clears throat> pardon me, that are only listed at 42,320? Sorry, Councillor, you lost me a little bit on where you are on, on the it, budget. Okay, it's on page 140, I don't and, have and, a, a, and you'll see firefighter vacant due to retirement to be filled, and there are 10 of them. Council, I'm sorry, but I don't have the same book you do, so I don't have a page 140. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. It's all right. Uh, <clears throat> oh, okay. My apologies. <clears throat> Where's the other number you're looking at? talking about the top salary that 63 no uh, well I don't know if that's top it says adding seven firefighters 63897 and the figure is 447279 but then on the other on the other chart you've got adding 10 firefighters at 42320 which is a much lower figure and I, I mean I just want to make sure that you have the, the funding sufficient to do what you need to do, and where there are two different figures, I want to make sure we use the right figure. I agree. Um, uh, and if you need to get back to us, we can, that's not a problem, but uh, maybe Mr. Claxon will. will. I, I, I think I can help out. Uh, so the, the spreadsheet that is in the budget, including on page 140, was the overall spreadsheet that was prepared uh, by the fire department to prepare us for these discussions. The answer is uh, yes, it's fully funded. So that 42320.38 is the base salary for a firefighter. Okay. What we did was uh, working together with the fire department, that 63897 includes all of the other incentives that are in the collective bargaining agreement. Right. But for uh, the 42320, that's just the base because the incentives appear in the overall budget in different line items. So they were credited just for the overall uh, salary there, okay. but bringing the new people on, they're uh, available to take part in all of those incentives in the collective bargaining agreement. And so in addition to what was budgeted, we needed to make sure that, that those amounts uh, were included as well. It, okay, is that, I, is that clear? I, I get you. The, the 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 other ten, the difference between the forty two three twenty and the and the sixty three eight nine seven is addressed in the in the regular budget exactly. under all of the different benefits that Correct. are in the collective bargaining agreement. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.
Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Cash. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <coughs> Good evening, Chief Williams. Good evening, Councillor. Um, I'm looking on page 141 under fire, personal services, non-overtime. And the second entry there is for a dispatcher. Mm -hmm. And the number is increasing $166,000 to 649,315. I just wondered if you would speak to that for a moment. Mm, sure. So if you see, um, as you saw in last year's budget, that 483,000, that was added in later from ambulance receipts. Yep. Okay. That's why, um, that's the way we had done it for the past several years. There was a zero request this year. Um, Mr. Clarkson has changed that and actually put those salaries in the budget. Um, was there a question? That well, it, so that's the dispatcher's salaries on an some, annual basis. Some of that in the personal services part. Okay. The chief is ab absolutely correct. So the amount is for the dispatchers. The way it was, from an accounting perspective, the way it was booked in the past is that it was paid directly out of ambulance receipts. What we did with this budget in an effort to more transparently reflect the expense was to show the expense as part of the fire department and then bring uh, a revenue source in from ambulance receipts uh, that, that equals out. And so the expense remains relatively the same as it has been in the past. It is increased due to uh, the collective bargaining agreement, right? But the, the fact that it shows up is because we're trying to just give a clearer picture of the sources and uses of the funds. Okay, thank you. And then I had a few lines down from there is an entry called unique pay. Mm -hmm. And um, what's unique pay? <clears throat> Basically, Councillor, it's to keep all the levels or ranks, their pay differences in line with each other. What would happen long ago, they figured when, when they gave a, a percentage raise to the whole department, let's say a deputy chief, a captain, or a lieutenant were actually as what, getting a larger raise than, than the firefighters, as normally they would because of the, the higher pay scale for the rank. Mm -hmm. Over a number of years, that pay scale started to get a little bit out of, out of whack, let's say. So they, they devised a... a um, plan, let's say, to keep those salaries in much in line with each other. I, I don't know if I'm making sense, but um, it, it's, it's a situation where it was put in to keep those salaries not from, so, so they didn't get higher and higher and higher for the, for the ranking officers and the firefighters were getting left behind a little bit. In other words, the difference between pay scales, I think it's uh, say 10% mm -hmm. for each one. But when the pay raises took effect over the years, they started to get higher and higher than the 10% or 12%, whatever it is between, between ranks. Mm -hmm. So it, it's basically a title that they came up with. And the explanation that was given years ago was um, privates on the fire department do a lot of the janitorial work, um, do a lot more, say, snow shoveling, let's say. Mm -hmm. So that's, it was grouped into that category. Of, and they just called it unique pay. That's very interesting. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> Thank you, Councillor. Uh, anyone else? Uh, Councillor Sullivan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Chief. Good evening. Chief, I just want to first of all say uh, working with you uh, is always professional. You're a true gentleman, so thank you for <coughs> what you do and, uh, and all the men and women that serve for, for the fire department. Um, Mr. Clarkson, I just wanted to follow up if I could. Troy, uh, relative to... Um, the vehicles, and, I, and, and you know, that's, this is awesome. It's long overdue, but I just want to make sure I'm clear on this. So there's a potential to acquire three, one with a grant and then two to bond out and get a loan, three vehicles. Yeah, I think the grant you're talking about, is that a safer? Yes. So uh, yeah, that, that's a federal grant uh, for, th that's to replace the, the ladder, right? The tower? That one is, was one of the two engines that, okay. the two engines that I was most worried about. Yep were engine five and engine seven. So those were the two I was trying for. One would be replaced if the grant was granted, and I'm not sure how that's gonna go. Okay. The second one was put into the budget. So we actually, uh, the plan right now, if you look in the back of your budget book where it says capital, it lists both of them. 
Uh, so we have. So you're hedging your bets just in case the grant right. doesn't come through. And and so, but we'll know that by the time that you can. I would assume the time you consider the the, the loan order. Uh, and so again, I know this is structured a little bit differently than what you're used to. But as we looked at the available money, excuse me, I had my back to you. Uh, the available money in the ambulance receipts account. It was clear to me that we could pay for the the annual costs of the borrowing through that account. How, how much is in that revolving, the balance, do you know? I don't off the top of my head, but I'll gladly Because my, to my thought is this, if, we, if we're basing a budget on acquiring two new ones via bonding it out with a municipal bond, amortizing it over X amount of time, paying it off through the revolving, why, why wouldn't we go for three? Why would we shortchange it? If you win the grant, great, that's one, but if we're budgeting, we should get the other two as well be short-sighted not to get three and it would be really really beneficial to the city of brockton so i like the idea that you baked it in here already i think that's smart finance but if we hit a home run and get the grant i'm going to be banging the drum that we get two plus the one because it doesn't make sense to say hey you you approved a budget but we're only going to get one because the city hit a home run and got the grant that's just my humble opinion but if we have the revolving account and it's a significant balance and we can amortize it over 30 years or whatever it makes sense. It's going to pay for itself. And it's not coming from taxpayers' money. It's coming from Brewster. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So w when we get close uh, to submitting that loan order for that and, and the cemetery expansion and some other capital expenses, we'll certainly consider that. I'll confer with the chief and, uh, and, and talk about his vehicle needs and at, at the time, and we'll bring that to you. When, when, when's, what's a guesstimate time on that? So you're meeting just once in July, right? So I would anticipate that the initial filing will be for your July meeting. And Chief, would you have an, uh, an answer one way or the other on a grant by July? <coughs> okay. So I mean, I think we just move forward and, and go with the two. I mean, I'm only one of 11, but I, I, it doesn't make sense not to if it's in the budget itself. So thank you for that. You bet. And uh, thank you for what you're doing again. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Councillor. Uh, Chief, I just have a quick one for you. Um, several years ago, I had asked the previous CFO to uh, give this body a breakdown of purchasing versus leasing mm -hmm. of fire equipment, because I know some communities do do that. I don't know if it makes prob it probably pro wouldn't make much sense in Brockton since you drive these things into the ground in terms of responding to calls. Right. But is there any way we can maybe through the new CFO get that so we can kind of because on the same line of uh, Council uh, Sullivan's questioning, we can get a bigger bang for our buck because if you're putting a couple million dollars towards yes. purchasing yeah. and you can kind of defray that into leasing, we might be able to get more than three trucks. Sure. So is there any way you guys can kind of work that together and, and provide us with a, basically a comparison, a breakdown comparison between purchasing and leasing just so that we can get an idea how this stuff works? Certainly. Appreciate it. Thank you, Chief. Okay. Thank you for service. Madam Clerk, number two, please. <coughs> Elections Commission, Cindy Scrivani, Executive Director. Madam Executive Director, uh, welcome to your, uh, is this your, it's not your first, but it's your second, because yes, you were here last you, year. Mr. President, Councilors. Come on in. Uh, Water is just fine. We're going with the department mission, I guess. Please. So first and foremost, we are uh, here to provide excellent public service to the residents of Broughton and uh, anyone else we come into contact. But um, the Elections Commission conducts all municipal, state, and federal elections within the city of Broughton in accordance with Mass General Laws. Uh, including setting up and staffing of elections and early voting. Uh, um, we or organize instructional sessions for wardens, clerks, and inspectors. And on that note, I am going to mention that we do need poll workers. So if anybody's interested, anybody knows anything, anybody. I also have some poll workers needed. If any of the councilors want to take some to their meetings and try to get some poll workers, of course, we're always looking for bilingual. That's a skill that we could always use. Um, we work with the State Office of Campaign Finance to ensure all campaign laws are followed. We prepare voter registration calendars. Uh, we get ballots 
for for voting together. We provide the licensure licensing of all dogs. Um, we maintain records so that our residents are able to come in and fill out forms for the, res the veterans to receive benefits and for students to allow them access to local education trade programs. Um, certify signatures, I could go on, but with that, I'll take questions about the budget. Thank you, uh, ma'am. Any questions for the executive director of elections relative to her budget? Going once, going twice. Thank you very much for your service. Thank you very much, counselors. Uh, number three, madam. Retirement contributory, Jean Martineau, director. Ms. Martineau, welcome to the city council budget hearings. Thank you very much for having me. Good evening, counselors. Good evening. <clears throat> Do you have a statement for us or? Yes, I do. Yeah, please. Established on July 1, 1936, the Brockton Contributory Retirement System currently consists of approximately 1,500 retirees and over 2,000 active and inactive members. The city, Brockton Housing Authority, Brockton Area Transit, and the Brockton Redevelopment Authority are all contributing units to the system. Mass General Law, Chapter 32, mandates that your board of trustees shall consist of five members. Two are elected by the membership. Two are appointed by the mayor, one being the ex officio, the city auditor in front of you. And then the fifth member is an independent member of the system <coughs> who is appointed by the other four members. It is the board's duty to provide secure retirement benefits to our pensioners and beneficiaries through efficient and careful oversight of investment practices. The daily operations of the office are administered by the executive director, me, and the staff. The trustees meet monthly so that they may vote on matters of policy and continue to be updated on topics that come before the board. We are committed to earning and maintaining the trust of our participants through quality customer service and by protecting future benefits in compliance with Mass General Law Chapter 32, 840 CMR and case law. The request that comes before you is an assessment which is developed by the funds actuary and approved by the Public Employee Retirement Administration Commission, PERAC, which is a state regulatory authority that oversees us. The request for the FY 2020 city appropriation is $26,354,614. That's it. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, any questions for Ms. Martineau? Oh. Going once, going twice. Thank you very much for coming down. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, Madam Clerk, uh, number five, please. Four. Okay, number four, please. Four. <laughs> License Commission, <laughs> Henry Tartaglia, Chairman. You know, it's the problem with the lights, I can't see. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Me either. Blind as it is. Okay. Mr. Tataglia, welcome. Good evening, counselors. The License Commission is required to operate in accordance with the Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 138 and 140, as well with the regulations of the Alcohol Beverage Control Commission and application of the Brockton ordinances and rules and regulations. Two commission holds hearings on violations brought against licensed establishments by local and state police. The License Commission is responsible for the issuance, regulations, collecting of fees for over 700 licenses, including license to sell all alcoholic beverages, common victor inholders, new car dealers, used car dealers, motor vehicle, junk dealers, lodging houses, automatic amusement device, entertainment licenses, and special one-day permits for sale of alcoholic beverages, and the newly added special events license, Kellen 218, Revenue collected totally approximately $315,000. The Office of the License Commission makes every effort to coordinate License Commission activities with other city departments such as the Board of Health, Building, Fire, Police, and Wine Inspector. Also compliance <clears throat> with licensee city tax obligations to verify with the tax collector and additional, uh, additional communications is maintained with the ABC Control Commission, the state agency, regulates the liquor industries. 
Thank you, Mr. Tisalvia. Any questions for our Council Fowler? Just a, a quick question, uh, Mr. Chairman. The License Commission is not the licensing authority for uh, retail or other marijuana licenses, but you do have a role to play secondary to the issuance of a license. And I wondered if the Law Department has had a chance to maybe get together with you and your members, or I would suggest if that happened, has not happened that you contact them and, and ask them to give you an overview of where you're going to fit into either renewals or suspensions or revocations or? Yeah, well, uh, I haven't heard anything, but I'll get, I'll get a hold of uh, uh, Phil Nezzarello and, and ask him about it. Is he the one to get a hold of? I, I would, yes, I would start with the law department, and I don't know if they'd bring someone else in who maybe specializes in license commissions, and, but, but it, you really, hopefully we won't have any problems, but we really need the license commission to be up to speed if something gets referred to them. Yeah. And we want this to roll out as smoothly as possible and have everyone in the loop as far as the required knowledge and procedures, and so you'll, you'll get quite an education. Uh, <laughs> you think I need it? <laughs> I don't know. I. No, we'll, we'll do that. We'll do that, <laughs> Councillor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Council Monaghan. Uh, yes. Good, good evening, uh, Mr. Tatalia. Where's Sylvia? We'd rather see her. Here. Well, see her here. I, I, I asked Sylvia to come, but um, <laughs> uh, she says I, uh, I I should come, so I'm I'm here, but. I'll tell you, she does a great job for the License Commission. I, I mean exceptional, uh, and it, I don't know, it's, this is probably not the place for it, but maybe doing license renewal and we could get a part-time person to help her, you know, you, you're talking 700 licenses and she has to answer the counter, the telephone calls, the complaints, uh, and, and, and answer a lot of questions. So I, I don't know, that's up to, uh, you guys, I guess if she could get part time for to help her during the license season. Uh, you're going to need more help with the marijuana coming in. So yeah. Anyway, wait, thank you, thank you, Miss. Thank you, Councillor, uh, uh, Mr. Tataglia. Probably the place to start is with the uh, the office on the first floor. You know, have a conversation with the guy down there, and then he can send in the request for us. And I'm sure that you'll probably get 11 votes up here for that particular stuff because we know how busy she is down there. Thank you. Thank you. I'll do that. Anyone else? Thank you for your service, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Let me put my glasses on and uh, <laughs> um, now number five. Weights and measures. Kevin Croker, sealer. Mr. Cooker, welcome. Thank you. Good evening. Mike is yours, and uh, if you can see your way here, go I can for say it. I'm all set. So the weights and measures department, we are uh, responsible for the annual testing sealing of any commercial weighing measuring device in the city. Um, a couple of examples of those are gas pumps, oil trucks, taxi meters, pharmacy scales, jewelry scales, deli scales, all the way up to 200,000 um, pound truck scales. We also conduct price verification inspections in any store that uses a scanning device at the point of sale. We do spot checks on net weight of packages Home, foil, uh, home heating oil deliveries and octane levels in the gasoline, as well as gas station price signs. Our goal is to create a level playing field for both the consumer and the merchant, or to ensure that equity prevails in the marketplace. Thank you, sir. Uh, any questions for the uh, CEDA? I just want to. Go ahead, sir. I just want to make a comment. We, we thank a lot of department heads for coming in here. But for $157,150, this gentleman and his uh, colleague okay. protect the interests of tens of thousands of consumers, those who visit the city and those who live in the city. And, uh, you know, gasoline stations, you, you go to the deli and you, you know, you buy a pound of turkey. And it, it sounds ridiculous, but these folks really do a tremendous job for a short amount of money, and uh, and and I I, I appreciate it, thank and you. I and I know many others do. So I appreciate thank you. That. They say we're involved in every weighing and uh, measuring transaction in the city every day. So yep. a lot of you know. 
Act. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Appreciate that. Council Borger. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, sir, for thank you. Uh, being here and uh, your, your team, uh, the two of you. <laughs> I'm curious because I know well, my oh, colleague, uh, right. Councilor uh, Sullivan, yeah. had brought up a couple of years ago that she okay. had caught someone with che questionable, like, uh, <coughs> what was it, had to do with the gas station? Oh. It was on. Gas station. And anyway, they, they um, what was I saying? We that. It, they were, how would I say, they were pro practicing illegal, you know, uh, how would I say, measurements. Okay. Now, they get fined, is that correct? That is correct. And who gets the fine? It would come to us, and then it okay. would go into the general fund, I believe. All right, that's what I thought, but I just, um, how much is a fine, something like that, or is it a particular situation? It all depends. I mean, there was, I, I don't know if, if you're referring to the one where the guy put the regular gasoline into the diesel. No, no, no. This was this was something else. But apparently he was cleared because it was you know maybe I don't know some mis of information. It was a uh, it was a Thank pump you. error relative to when people pumped it. it. The calculation looked like you were being charged more, but it was it was cleared, yes, counselor. Yeah, no, that's that's. But I am. But had he been caught, he would have been. He would have had a penalty. And that's, that's what I was curious no, about, the fines. a lot fines. of times in that case, it, it sounds like what they did is they started pumping the fuel, they stopped, but the money kept registering. Mm -hmm. So we would get out, we'd get a complaint, we answer every complaint. We would go down there, inspect that to make sure, it's usually a, just a check valve or kind of very simple fix. Okay. And they would have their maintenance company come in and fix that. Um, we would pump out the fuel, stop the pump. And if it keeps registering money, we would shut the pump down, tell them that they need to have this repaired by. So the fine on that, you know, if they kept doing it, obviously we'd fine them. But it's just a valve. It's kind of like a human error, not, well, machinery error. It's, sure. not, okay. it's not something fraudulent. I mean, how much do you think you collect in different fines throughout the year? I'm just rather curious. Uh, Attempts people fines make. Fines alone, um, when I first started the job, we had a lot of fines with the price verification. Really? Oh uh, Yeah, a lot of fines. Um, where, I mean, I've been doing this for 18 years, so the program has gotten a lot better where we're not really seeing the amount of fines. So I don't have the number off the top of my head, but I could get the. Uh, oh, you know, I know, that's not necessary. I was just curious. So, in other words, it's not an abundance of, uh, of situations. It can be if they're wrong. We have a certain stores that we always find, and we make really? a lot of money off it. Oh, okay, all right. You know. No, thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Councillor. Anyone else? I, I just have a quick question for you, sure. and uh, if you could just explain it to me. So, there's two of you guys in your department. Hmm? You don't have a you don't have a clerk or an assistant. You're the clerk. I'm the secretary. So how does your day how does your day basically start? I mean, you come in and decide, and you get in your in your truck and you drive around the city, or you have, you know, some ways where you uh, basically schedule certain areas of uh, of hitting. So um, every business, um, every device is typically done once a year. Uh, if their seal is broken or they have work done on it. They cannot use that device until we come in and, you know, check. And they it. call you that, direct. That is correct. Okay. Right. Um, typically, my day starts by doing, I uh, sending out letters, invoices, fines, or what have you. Um, I do payroll, and uh, time and attendance, and so you know, it's, it works. Okay. Um, Impressive. Anyone else? Uh, thank you for all that you do and continue to do the, the, the work that you do for our city. And thank you citizens. so much. I appreciate thank you guys. Thank you. Appreciate it. Madam Clerk, uh, number six, please. Information Technology Center, William Santos, Acting Director. Mr. Santos, welcome. Thank you. Good evening, Council President, Councilors. Uh, the City of Brockton's Information Center provides service and support to a variety of city and governmental departments and organizations. More than just a technology provider, the Information Technology Department also serves as a business planning and implementation center. Our mission is to streamline business processes with the use of technology while improving the efficiency and delivery of improved services for employees and the citizens of Brockton. 
The Brockton Information Technology Center manages the city's communication networks, which includes local area networks, fiber optic wide area networks, virtual private network equipment and firewalls, the city's email, website, financial information management, 600. geographical information, police and fire department management and reporting, real and personal property appraisal, cemetery plot management, public safety cameras, uh, and network data slash application storage systems. The department's also responsible for all the data processing related to the production of employee paychecks, municipal bills, accounts payable checks, budget, uh, budget preparation accounting reports, and provides all the repair and maintenance, as well as end user training for the city's software, personal computers, printers, and peripherals. <coughs> as the Information Technology Board Chairman, the Information Technology Board establishes policies and standards for the information technology employed by the city. And I, I would just uh, like to thank my staff, the building and fire departments for their help uh, that they bring to all of our projects. And with that, I'll take any questions. Uh, questions for the IT director? Mm, Madam Nicastro. <laughs> you too? Madam Nicastro. Council Nicastro. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good Madam. evening, Mr. Santos. I have a question um, on page 152 because I'm looking at your overtime proposed entry, $50,379, and then down below under in Infotech Purchase of Services, I'm looking at, or no, no, that's wrong, down below under On Call, which is in Infotech Personal Services uh, Non-Overtime there's a uh, $68,000 figure. So if you're on call, aren't you on overtime? No. No, on call is just uh, being available to take a call after the 4.30 to 8 a.m. period, uh, and that's uh, 16 hours a day. Somebody would be on call if, uh, by contract, if you are called back into work after leaving work, oh, you get okay. a minimum of four hours. Uh, overtime pay, so even if you show up for an hour, or, or if it takes five, then you, you would get five hours. But that is, uh, that is not the same item. <coughs> On call is just being available. Uh, it rotates through, through 10 people. Uh, so every 10 weeks, you're on call for the full week from 4.30 p.m. to 8 in the morning. Wow. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Fowell. Good evening, and thanks for all you do. Uh, we protect a lot of valuable and sensitive information. Um, I'm looking at page 152, and under Department Equipment Repair, 524500, uh, anytime I see the same number year after year after year, right down to the dollar, I kind of <laughs> smile because it's like somebody plugged that in there. I mean, nothing. Nothing usually comes up the same year repetitively uh, for the same amount, but 743319, and it says Department Equipment Repair. Right. Is, it, there's got to be replacement in there. I mean, we don't really pay people three quarters of a million to repair. Uh, uh, is that 5245 that you're referring to? Yep. Yes. 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 All right, so what that is is that's service agreements. Okay. And uh, Munis, our financial system, is 54% of that cost. The rest is, is broken out um, into like storage maintenance, Wi-Fi, uh, transparency software, call recording maintenance, um, uh, Munis code for the web ordinances, weights and measures software that we pay for. Um, antivirus maintenance, there's, there's a list that I have that I go by. I create a spreadsheet and the reason it doesn't go up is because generally we try to consolidate or cut services to maintain that number because we're asked to level fund, not level service. If we were level servicing, the number would go up every year. 
All right, you do have 5426, Department, yeah, Data Processing Software. Uh, that's different, I understand, 224845, okay. Uh, the other one was Consultant, 60,000. Yes. That would be? That's used for a variety of things. If, if uh, service fail beyond the skill sets of, of our people, we bring in consultants. We, uh, we help in many years in the past. Uh, we help with the close of books through the auditing. We hire consultants to come in and, and get some of that work done. Uh, Schedule A, I believe it's called, is uh, reporting to the state, things of that nature. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Thank you, Councilor Farwell. Yeah. Uh, Councilor Yanieri. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening. How are you? <laughs> Thank you. How are you? Good. Question I have, um, not so much of something within the budget, but something that was um, mm -hmm. started last year when I was City Council President was the website was being done over completely and we're already into June and into another year um, and yet we've yet to see that whole that whole new page can you bring yeah. us up to speed on yeah that? I'm sorry I meant to mention that prior to taking questions um, there are a couple of reasons uh, why the, there's been a delay I think uh, I've been working with the auditor's office uh, with Mel going through everything to make sure that we are not listing things that should not be listed. Uh, and then we have a, a fairly new CFO that came in and he jumped right into budget. We did give him a, a, a light demo, but we wanted to be fair and have him go through it okay. as well as the HR um, uh, director so that uh, we're not violating any HEPA rules okay. and with the display of what we're giving you. This, this has turned out to be far more information than what was you know, asked Sad for. Okay. And uh, I, I'm sure that sometime shortly after budget, we'll give a good demo to the finance team and then we'll present it for a final time to the mayor and then it's, it's his, so, it's his so, to launch when he wants. So we're hoping within the next maybe 30 days? You know, I, I, I hope to, yes. I hope so. I mean, yeah. I, 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 I mean, from my standpoint, I think it's done, but I'm not a financial okay. person. Yeah. I need to have sign off from them before I put it in front of the mayor uh, and tell him that it's complete. So, right, right. I, I, I would like to see it. I mean, we'd all like to see it soon because when <laughs> it, it, it is. I a, did a demo. And it is a re-election year too, so things can change. Yeah. You know what I mean? The only I, thing with I me is going to change. My happy. hair's getting lighter. You know what I'm saying? So I yeah, just want to. Yeah. All right. I just, <laughs> I just wondered where it was at, yeah. but I appreciate. It. I know it takes time. I do I think know. you'll, you'll be very happy with it. When okay. You, when great. It comes. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, anyone else? Uh, Councillor Sullivan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Santos. Good evening. I, I don't have any questions, uh, Bill, relative to the actual budget, um, but when Kathy Smith and Mike Thomas came before us, they're talking about renovating, and I know Kathy doesn't like it to call the new Brockton High. <laughs> right. And I was born in 70, so it's not that new. Um, <laughs> that would have a drastic impact on IT since you're in the core of the building. Yeah. Um, and I think Mike said they're going to try to do it in phases, um, you know, red building, green, azure, I call it the blue. But ultimately, have you, have you been participating in conversations, number one, relative to that? Probably not, no. it's premature. My, my hope, if a new public safety building comes to fruition, I believe we should be part of that. We should be housed there. Ah. Okay. With police, fire, and you know, the security would be great, first of all. Um, and uh, in the last, round where we did uh, some searching for land or whatever uh, and some planning, we were, we were a part of that. Now, I don't know if I am uh, this time around, but uh, I've heard talk of it again, and I, I hope to be part of it. Okay, that's news to me. Thank you, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, anyone else for Mr. Santos? Going once, twice, three times. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank thank you, you. Councillors. Thank you. Number seven, madam. Procurement, Michael C. Morris, CPO. Mr. Morris, bienvenue. Good evening. The procurement department is responsible for enforcing the procurement laws of Massachusetts. The procurement laws were put in place to prevent favoritism and fraud. 
while at the same time promoting free and open competition. The office works with the various city departments to assist them with the purchasing of goods and services through bids, RFPs, and quotes. These purchases cover a wide range from office supplies, vehicles, consulting services, construction, demolition, the purchase and sale of real property, and et cetera. Um, and with that being said, I'll take any questions. Councilor Yamir. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, um, Michael. How are you? Good evening. Good. Um, and I'm sure all councilors have probably seen within your, your budget that um, there is a vacant funded position which calls for administrative assistant. And I do want to indicate to my fellow colleagues that one of the things that I did before I departed as being city council president was to talk to the mayor in regards to um, an, another position within this procurement department. And I think nobody is going to say um, I'm off the wall with it because I think they all realize that procurement is a very, very important job. And uh, I did it some years ago when I worked for the Plymouth County Sheriff's Department. Um, and it's, it's a job that you're busy all day long and you can't just have one or two or two and a half. You need the amount of people uh, to have a complete staff so that the job can be done so the director of procurement can do his job. And I think it's very, very important and for any of us to overlook this and, and, and say, you know, why is it there and should it be there? Yeah, it should, yes, it should be there. It should definitely be there. So I'm, I'm putting my, uh, you know, I'm, I'm definitely putting my support behind it because I think it's something that's well, well overdue. Um, and I met with Michael a few times on it. Um, it's, it's, you know, something that has to be done because he can't continue to keep doing everything as he just listed. And I mean, it's, it's steps that he has to take and sometimes spend time on the telephone and can't answer other calls when he's got to be looking at what we have to do for procurement. And, and Michael's always done an outstanding job for the years he's um, been in this position. So um, I'm, I'm rooting for you, Michael, to, you know, this stays within there because I think it's a, it's a needed, needed position. So I hope my counselors are listening uh, on that, but uh, appreciate all that's done within your department. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Durancourt. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, it's good to see you, Mr. Morris. Um, I remember last year uh, doing the uh, budget debate, and I think one of my colleagues uh, asked you the question, how, how, did, how do you do your job? And I think you said, you know, you, you, you do what you have to do. And I could not be more, more happy uh, to see that you put that position in there. And I can, you know, concur with my colleague in regard to supporting this. And I think, you know, your department uh, truly uh, needs uh, you know the persons and I hope that you know some of my colleagues will not only reinforce but understand the complexity of your department and also you know help you out so you can do your job accordingly so thank you for actually putting this in there thank you Mr. Chairman thank you thank you sir uh, Council Borger uh, thank you Mr. President thank you for being here and uh, all you do I'm just curious have things gotten a little bit more complicated applications reviews of the bids over the years I find we're doing a, a lot more uh, construction projects. So um, with that, the complexity of the bids have changed and it's, um, there's different requirements by the state now. I have to um, list all um, projects on the statewide procurement system, which is combis. So oh, that's another okay. task that I have to do. So yes, it is. Okay, thank you. I mean, I agree with this, you know, situation myself that, you know, uh, how would I say another hand is needed, but I was just curious how some things evolve and some things just stay the same and never change. So in this case, a lot of changes over the years because you've been doing this for some time now. Little, you were a young, very young man. <laughs> yeah. And then with the acquisition of the uh, Shaw Center and the Rock Stadium, that's going to create more mm -hmm. uh, procurement work also. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Sure. Thank you for letting us know. Thank you, Councilor. Uh, anyone else for Mr. Morris? Going twice, twice, three times. Thank you, Mr. Morris. Thank you. Thank you. Number eight, please, Madam Clerk. Emergency Management, Stephen Hook, Director. Mr. Hook, bienvindo. I said bienvenue last time, so now I'm going to say bienvindo. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. President. Thank you, sir. City Council members. Uh, the Emergency Management Agency is the agency charged with ensuring the city is prepared to withstand, respond to, and recover from all types of emergencies and disasters, including natural hazards, accidents, deliberate attacks, technology, and inf infrastructure failures. BEMA staff is committed 
to an all hazards approach to emergency management by building and sustaining effective partnerships with federal, state, and local government agencies and the private sector, individual, families, nonprofits, and business businesses. BEMA ensures the city's ability to rapidly recover, recover from large and small disasters by assessing mitigating threats and hazards, enhancing preparedness, ensuring effective response, and strengthening our capacity to rebuild and recover. Um, some of the other things that BEMA is responsible for is by law we're responsible, along with the fire department, we're responsible to keep records of chemicals, uh, which are designated tier two hazardous materials facilities. So we keep, we keep records of that. Um, and also we manage the CERT team. We have a 110 member CERT team. Uh, and we do uh, monthly public, free public uh, preparedness training. Uh, so I just wanna thank uh, the mayor, the councilors, my volunteers, um, the departments that we work with on a daily basis for the, for the continued support and uh, my budget this year, I think increased about $550, um, but I'm happy to answer any questions. Uh, thank you, Mr. Hook. Uh, any questions? Uh, I have one quickie, hopefully uh, uh, I'll pick up on something else. How, how do we compare to size-wise to other emergency management agencies in the, uh, let's say, the like the cities of our, our sizes. So a lot of cities our size, <coughs> actually a lot of cities smaller than us have full-time emergency management agencies. City of Taunton, New Bedford, Plymouth, uh, all have full-time emergency management agencies. So we're a little behind the times on that. All right, thank you, uh, Councilor Cruz. Just a question a little bit on, you said you keep records of different chemicals and that kind of thing used in businesses and all through the city, is that what, now where do you physically keep them? What do you, I know that you have the bunker over there at the War Memorial, which has worked out well during storms and all, but where do you physically light and where do you keep those records? So they're kept electronically and paper copy at the War Memorial. So at, you have an office over there where you keep those? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Council Cruz. Council Monahan. Good evening, Steve. Good evening. Are, are you planning on filling the communi communi uh, communication director's job? Yes, so uh, I am planning on filling it. Uh, I actually submitted a letter to the mayor with a name uh, a couple of weeks ago, so it is in progress. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor. Uh, anyone else? Uh, Councilor Borger. Yes, um, this communications director, what are they primarily responsible for? Community outreach, uh, reaching out to, so a lot of things that we should be doing that we try to do is reach out to businesses and uh, healthcare facilities, uh, assisted living facilities to make sure that they have a plan in case of an emergency. If they need to evacuate that building, what's their plan? Sure. So we kind of uh, work with them to make sure that they have a plan when an emergency does happen. Right, thank you. Thank you. thank you, Councillor. Uh, again, thank you, Mr. Cruz. I mean, Mr. Cruz. Mr. <laughs> I got a promotion. No problem. I got a promotion. He's Mr. much better looking. For, you. <laughs> uh, for all that you do for our city, uh, and the reason why I ask that question is, is that sometimes we forget that we're not South Avon. You know, we're the city of Brockton, and <laughs> we should Sorry. act like it and look like it. So, thank you for all that you do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Number nine, please, Madam okay. Clerk. Planner, Rob May, Director of Planning and Economic Development. Where is it? Mr. May. Mr. President, how are Bienvenido. you? Bienvenido. Good to hear that. We're going to go through all of them. So. Thank you. Um, I'm Rob May. I'm Director of Planning and Economic Development. The department is responsible for all aspects of planning and development in the city, including assisting the mayor and city council with pol public policy and analysis. The department interacts with the public in a variety of topics from business attraction to brownfield redevelopment. The department oversees and implements various phases of the Brockton 2025 strategy, which calls for a citywide master plan, which we've created and called the uh, Blueprint for Brockton, as well as 12 
um, corridor and, and district plans that we hope to have prepared between now and the year 2025. Uh, <coughs> In this year, we will look forward to working uh, with council on uh, some targeted amendments to the zoning ordinance, as well as offering some complete overhauls of key articles that will support uh, revitalization in the Campello uh, Business District and the South Main Street Corridor. Uh, it is important to note that the office is also responsible for the full management of the Conservation Commission, the Technical Review Board, and the Planning Board, and that the current uh, staff uh, attends all the night meetings of the Planning Board and Conservation Commission. We've had a pretty good year. Um, I'm very excited about the progress that we've made. Um, we have um, probably close to $150 million worth of projects that are either under construction or have been permitted uh, through our office and should be under construction in the next year or so. Um, today was also a really good day in that the first pieces of the, uh, of, of the precast garage were uh, delivered and put in place today. Uh, and we also received a $100,000 Brownfields grant from the US EPA to assist us in advancing the downtown revitalization effort. Um, we are before you um, now with a, uh, uh, our annual budget, which includes um, the addition of two new staff positions. And with that, I'll take questions. Uh, thank you, Mr. May. Uh, Councillor Monaghan. Yes, uh, good evening, Mr. May. Good evening, sir. I don't really have any questions on the budget. I'm just glad to see the progress we're making, especially in the downtown area. And i um, also like to recognize the dedication of your staff, especially uh, Pam, uh, Frank, yeah, Pam and Frank Gurley. Pam is here tonight on her 43rd wedding anniversary, so she's quite yeah. dedicated. Yeah. <laughs> That's dedication. Yeah, I, I think she's more medicated being here tonight. Something's wrong with that. But anyway, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Councillor. Councillor Sullivan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. May, good evening. Good evening, sir. Uh, relative to those two positions, I, I, I think, and this is probably for Mr. Claxon, I think there's a Scrivener's error because it says vacant unfunded. Uh, and I think we ran into that last night as well. So um, m my question, Rob, would be relative to uh, the Main Street manager. That previous position was, I mean, it was a failure. Yes. So I guess, I guess from our perspective, it was an utter failure. So, so my thought is, I agree. Um, how do you envision, if this comes back to fruition, that it can be used in a beneficial way to better Brockton? Well, for the first um, point, the, the former Main Street manager's position was funded by the Brockton Redevelopment Authority and was managed out of B21. Uh, this new position will actually be a city position, full-time city position, under the direct supervision of, of me and my department. So we have a very um, thorough scope of, of work that we'll be developing that goes along with the job description um, and, and will guide um, that person uh, a, a little more thoroughly than, than what had been sort of loosey-goosey over at B21. And, and I mean, the terminology Main Street Manager, it, it, it doesn't stop in the downtown core. No, and, and I should say that, that Main Street is a program um, out of the U.S. Department of Interior, Department of Historic Preservation, and it's, it's a philosophy in a program that um, strives to regenerate commercial districts based on the principles of, of historic preservation of existing buildings, of organizing businesses and their communities to um, uh, facilitate the promotion of the districts, to create economic change in the districts, and uh, oh, organize the businesses. So the, there's four principles of the Main Street program. We're looking at um, multiple districts. We would be working with the Campello historic Campello downtown area, the Montello businesses, and um, Legion Parkway uh, is, is an area that needs a lot of focus also, in addition to what you, we consider Main Street, Main Street. I, and I guess my other, my other question would be, and it's probably just for your professional expertise, but several years ago I filed a resolve on adopting CPA in the city of Brockton. 
Um, and I know Council Cruz and I have had a lot of conversations. At that time, there was no appetite. They said it's a tax. In your professional opinion, Rob, do you think a CPA, Community Preservation Act, would be beneficial to the city of Brockton? If you promise not to stone me, um, yes. Um, CPA, uh, Community Preservation Act, would, um, as you say, leverage a, a fee on top of um, real estate transactions that then ma is matched by state funding. The state's already collecting a fee on our transactions now. We're just not getting it back because we don't match it. So we're leaving money on the table and it's going to Avon and Easton and other places. Um, what CPA would allow us to do is really go after um, historic preservation projects and um, uh, park and recreational improvements. Uh, we look at the, at, at the Crosby School Building and it's in dire need of, of restoration. It is a historic building. CPA funds would go uh, to something like that. Improving all of our neighborhood parks, CPA could, could go into something like that. So it's something that we would love to discuss with council. It, it of course needs a council vote and then it needs a, um, a ballot initiative uh, for the, the voters in general, but it, it's kind of out of my hands at the moment. Right, but just in your professional opinion, you think it's a... It's I a, think it would be beneficial to the community. Because originally the scope was just for historic, it's expanded to green space and parks, so it's kind of it's kind of a win-win. Yes, especially since they've now um, expanded it to include active recreation, so yeah, improvements yeah, to the ball fields, and improvements to the playgrounds. It's not just mm -hmm. green, you know, pasture land, um, it, it's active yeah. recreation. Thank you, Mr. May. Councils, I think we should revisit that proposition mm -hmm. again. Good. Thank I'm you, Mr. You. Chairman. I concur. I believe I have Council Durancourt, Beauregard, and then Council Cruz. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Good to sir. see you, Mr. May. Uh, in regard to uh, community services, uh, I see that in 2019, uh, your request was 4140 bucks, and this year I see that it's 7000 Can you explain to me why you... You have that in question under it? It's, uh, it's page 181, 81. Yes, communication services in increases um, proportionally. We would be adding two new staff members, so it's um, phone and data plan and, and calling plan for those two new staff people, plus <laughs> the replacement of our existing um, uh, cell phones that, that we use to communicate with ourselves and with our clients. So based on what you said, uh, you believe that not having that, that increase will somewhat make your communication service somewhat ineffective. Would that be a true statement? It, it, it would make it more effective because the, the two new people, should we um, get those two new staff people, they don't have um, cellular uh, connections right now with the city. So um, it, would, it, it would improve that. And that number is uh, developed by the IT department who is basically charging us back for those communication services. So in regard to communication services, I mean, are you talking about communication within um, the city's department or sort of like outside of the city of Brockton? Well, it, it's the cell phones, the calling plans, and the data plans that go with those cell phones. That's what's under the communication services. So that's why you are requesting that increase? Yes, sir. Excellent. My next question is that I see that um, in, 2019, in 2019, again, uh, on their consultant, uh, your, your recommendation was uh, $66,193. And as we speak, you asked, for, I mean, it, you asked this year for $75,000. Uh, what kind of consultant does your department require and if, you, you, and if your department does require a consultant, can you explain to me, like, what is that? Um, we do have a consulting line item, uh, and we do specific projects throughout the year. Um, we work closely with the Old Colony Planning Council. Um, those services that we did with the um, Campello uh, Vision mm -hmm. and the um, Campello um, existing condition studies. Those were funded through our consulting line item. We also um, hired uh, graphic artists periodically to help us uh, visualize sites with uh, the community. And uh, we do other projects in neighborhoods that, that don't have access to diff dollars like we do downtown. So um, how often does uh, your office require 
um, consultant. And if you can be more specific in regard to my questions, can you give me like a prime example where your department uh, did need a consulting person to actually advise you on certain things? I, I'm sorry, Troy was coughing during that, so I missed. Oh no, part I can. I can sorry, definitely. We, I can definitely. Uh, we ask my questions. Um, the question was, how often does your department require a consultant? And to be more specific, can you give me one example in regard to something you probably did recently that did require this kind of service? Um, we bring them consultants on as in an ad hoc basis as we need them. And an example of that is um, our, our relationship with Old Colony Planning Council. We um, first funded a, an existing conditions of the Campello uh, Business District and the Southern Main Street Commercial Corridor. Uh, we then worked to create a, uh, a community vision of that. Um, that was uh, funding that we matched with Old Colony Planning Council. And then um, as another example of that, we hired uh, a couple of landscape architects to help develop visual graphics that, that went into that plan so that it's not just a series of words. There's, there's something that you can look at that expresses the vision of, of what the community would like to see in the Campello neighborhood. Okay, sounds good. I mean, last year I asked you um, to sort of like give us, well, give me, and hopefully my colleague will accept it, somewhat a summarization of what your department has been doing. And I believe you emailed me something, uh, which was uh, pretty good, but also long too. Uh, can you do the same thing for me again this yes, year in can. terms of like what, what, what I mean by this is that in, instead of giving me, you know, b b like 20, 50 pages, uh, I would like to see somewhat a summarization of what your department has been doing, not just uh, in 2019, but also in, 2000, in 2018 and hopefully what you expect to do uh, in 2020 because this budget will carry on to 2020. I'd be more than happy to see if I can you know, find some sure. documents in terms of like some of your accomplishment in regard to some of the stuff that you that that you have been doing. Would that be okay with you? Uh, that that would be. Now, some of the information is confidential or or hmm. held closely to the vest, but the information that uh, you know deals that have been done, projects that have happened, would we're very happy to make that available to you. And and the next question is that if you don't if you don't mind, Mr. Chairman, how long will it take for for us to receive this information? Um, we are at year end right now, so we're trying to wrap up as many projects as we can between now and the end of June. Um, I think we can be working on it simultaneously. So I would like to, you know, I would like to get um, sort of like, maybe not a date, but at least a couple months. You can see something like July and August. And if you're going to take two months, I, I, I would appreciate if you can actually tell me maybe by the end of, of I, August. I hope to have it to you before July 1st. Before July 1st. So I can count on you. I'm going to put this down. Yes. <laughs> so before July 1st, you will be able to provide all this information. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. May. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, thank you. And um, Counselor? I'm sorry. What was the amount today that we received? Um, we received, um, actually, it's 300000 Okay, me. thank you. That's what I, I thought I heard. But then I said, man, what did they do? Take some of it back? No, <laughs> just. In, in, inflation in reverse. Yeah, no. Yes, it is $300,000 no, for 300, assessments. Okay. Yes, ma'am. All right, so that's. Thank you. You no, know, you know, you're welcome. But I just I want to make sure I made that clear because I didn't want to be going around and giving misinformation because that had to do with if I describe it to people, the first step basically in assessing Brownfields area Correct. or some type of toxic situation that um, we've uh, we have met much of in a city that was man you know primarily manufacturing for over the hundred years okay and uh, so that was one thing um let's go back to historical because i noticed in more than one you know the section there was money taken out or you know asked to be taken you know in the budget for the historical commission now i know i've been at this for some time now this whole historical commission but in my fantasies we have the historical commission and the appointees because I remember a couple of months ago you, you know, were talking about how Correct. they were looking at them, and I realized they don't fall from the sky. But the other part of this is that 
I imagine in some instances this could be advantageous to get more grants Correct. that would help the projects that we hope to see into fruition. Like last night I was talking about the <laughs> War Memorial and what I was trying to say was that, for example, in Plymouth, since they have so many historical sites, or in Quincy, they've been able to connect up with other groups and it's in situations perfectly example in Quincy, they have, it's a national park. So people yes. are paid by the feds. And you come into downtown Quincy where the two presidents are buried and their wives and what have you and all the other historic situations. And in um, Plymouth, it's a little bro broken down a little bit differently and some is national, but mo uh, most of it is state and county situations that they focused on. And that's what I was trying to say the other night is that to me, that should fall under a separate entity and not be part of, uh, how would I say it, taking from the building department, which you know is limited in its staff to begin with, and that people could have little uniforms and turn around and get paid into, through that situation as opposed to, and that's why I'm really pushing this historical part, and especially because Plymouth County is celebrating 2020 next year, and I was hoping to get some Plymouth of the tourist revenue Mr. dollars. Chairman, yes. just as a, Unless I'm missing something, I don't see anything in the planning budget about the Historical Commission. No, well, it said Historic Com Commission, it was cut under, and then when he highlighted the situation on that they were, you know, the historic dollars, that's why I wanted to bring that into, into mention. I thought maybe I missed something here. Okay, no. No, no his, historic activities can come under our regular consulting yes. budget uh, line item. Uh, we have also used uh, DIF funding. Uh, we just recently partnered with Mass Development and have uh, made an application to the Massachusetts Historical Commission to create and recommend two new historic districts in downtown. Uh, we're tweaking those. We've gotten our comments and feedback back, uh, and, and we need to tweak those applications, but we have a very strong case for two historic districts downtown. On, uh, in addition to the, the one we have now. Okay, okay, thank you. Because, um, yes, Councillor Farrell is right. Mostly I saw the deduction. Why, why yeah. do this? Uh, instead of sitting here talking about issues that are not pertaining to the budget itself, why don't we file this all and bring this to the Oh, no, I, I would be happy to do that. But the We'd reason be is to. because I saw the 4000 coming out of the mayor's bu budget when he had the various commissions. So when you brought that up, that's why I was asking. Okay, so that's I'm not I'm not familiar with a line item that was for the historic commission in the past. It, it this wasn't is the in first my, time I had seen it. Actually. It wasn't in my budget, so I. Okay, all right, all right. And so I don't see anybody else's. Council, point of information: okay. yes. If you recall, last year's budget had a zero on the historic commission. Yes. We questioned <laughs> the mayor, and Mr. Conant said it was a scrivener's error, and they added it after the budget. Yes. So that that amount, the four grand. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at the Diversity Commission and all the other commissions, there, there is a line item for each, each one. True. The only yes. one last year is because they forgot to put the Historic Commission because we had just ratified it at that time. Okay, all right, thank you. But that's, that's why I was following up with it's that. And budget. then you okay. had mentioned that you were getting the appointees, so that's why yes. I was Okay, all right, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Madam Council Cruz. Uh, actually, thank you, I'll just be very brief. Uh, when, we, when you're speaking about the Main Street uh, program and uh, that it's a program, federal program. I'd like to see you, besides those areas you mentioned, in many ways Belmont Street has become Main Street in Brockton. Mm -hmm. And I'd like mm -hmm. to see yes. if we can start to organize the businesses, at, as particularly up around the Marshall's Corner, uh, where there's new restaurants and there's many, mm -hmm. and there's some marketing opportunities there. And it may be on the edge of Brockton, but it's Brockton. So I'd like to see what we can do to organize the businesses up there also. So. Yes, thank sir. You. Um, and, and if I may, thank you for jogging my memory as, as Ward 1 Counselor. Um, we also received a grant from uh, Mass Development to work with um, Stewart Healthcare to start planning the um, Good Samaritan campus mm -hmm. and making it available for um, a life science campus. You, you look at the area now, there's a lot of underutilized property Probably there. They are the right. largest taxpayer in the city, and if there's an opportunity to increase tax revenue, we're certainly going to work on that. Yeah, that's great. And I forgot about that myself, so that's good. And then Councilor Solomon and I will re file and resolve about the CPA, Community Correct. Preservation Act, which 
Uh, I recently had a <coughs> conversation with Registrar of Deeds, John Buckley, and the city has left over $8 million on the table yes. just in the last 10 years on money that could be coming to the city. So we'll be, we'll be talking about that later. But that's not part of the budget, so I'm not talking about it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Council Cruz. Uh, right Council Ianieri, Nicastro, and then Powell. Uh, good evening, Mr. Mayor. How are you? Good evening, sir. I was, um, I was just out of the chambers at, at the time. I think somebody may have also mentioned something in regards to the Main Street, uh, the manager's position, and I, I totally agree with my colleague from Ward 1 because Belmont Street is becoming yes, and sir. will be coming in the next few years um, a very, very um, active, uh, active area, so we'll be seeing a lot of different happenings there. But my, I guess my question is, you know, with, with bringing back the position, and, and I look at, you know, the amount that uh, you're funding, um, I'm just concerned of what type of, you know, individual will we really see to come in to work for like $40,000. That's my, that's a concern I have. Just, you know, you know, I don't know what type of person you're looking for for, for that. You, you see what I'm saying? I mean, uh, and if I may, you're okay. right. I mean, how do you get somebody, you know, uh, yeah, uh, you know, in, in that kind of, because it's a special niche that you need to work on. But I'm, I'm happy to say that uh, that is, the city's share of of a position that we're working with the Brockton Redevelopment Authority to provide additional funding um, that will bump that that up. Oh, okay, which could bump it up. I understand with the senior planner one. I'm sure that was. I think there was some other monies that may have come out of even the money. B twenty one dollars. B twenty one dollars, and I don't have a problem with that. But God rest uh, her soul. Okay, so you're looking here with the VRA to to be bringing in something at the same time, so it could it could make its way up to. We're going to match. Uh, of, of, okay, I got you. It's, All right, so it's that's part right. of our continued partnership. Okay, great. All right, thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor, I think I had Lally first before Nick right. Cash. Okay. Um, hi. How are you? Good evening, sir. All right. Uh, I said a quick question um, regarding, you know, everything that's, that's going on in the budget. I swear it's related. Um, uh, you're doing fantastic work, you know, downtown in Campello and throughout the city. Uh, and I know you did talk a bit about downtown in Campello. So as a, you know, counselor in the, the northern end of the city, I would be remiss if I didn't ask about Montello, uh, you know, and if there's anything, you know, that you've, that you've got planned for up there right now. And, and as a resident of the Montello area, um, live within a quarter mile of the train station, um, it's, it, it is near and dear to my heart. Um, we will be coming forward um, probably next council meeting to introduce some, uh, the acceptance of a grant uh, opportunity and uh, we're gonna be asking to authorize the acceptance of that that will allow us to continue work in the Campello and Montello area. We wanna look at the zoning and the area around the tracks, around the um, train station. Um, there was a village there once um, and we need to work to revitalize that. Absolutely, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Nicastro. Thank you, good evening, Mr. Good evening. Chairman. Either I keep the glasses on to see the paperwork or I take them off. I, to I see. have that problem too. Yeah, it's, like it's tough. Um, so you've got lofty goals seeking two new employees. Talk to us about. I could use more than that, but. I'm sure. Talk to us about what your ideas are for a senior planner economic development. The senior planner economic development is a um, seasoned planning professional who's going to be working with the uh, major employers that are currently in the city um, on a sectoral wide um, strategy. Uh, you may have noticed um, or, or seen a posting that we recently did. We've been working with uh, Massachusetts Institute of Technology and the Mass Life Science Center. Uh, we have a nascent life science cluster here in Brockton and um, it, it extends from Brockton up to um, Canton. And so we'll be working, continuing to work on a um, sector strategy for that. We also have a food sector um, cluster here. And um, we're talking about the manufacturing of food uh, every, anywhere between um, the Pizzeria Uno and uh, Cape Cod frozen pizzas uh, that you see in the, in the supermarket to the little um, lemons 
uh, that you see in the produce, the plastic lemons and the, and the lemon juice. Um, Cindy's Kitchens is here. Uh, we've just attracted a new um, nacho, or what, tortilla chip uh, manufacturer that, that will be expanding on West Chestnut. Uh, and so we'll be looking at and going, both working with the existing businesses, but also then going out to market Brockton to those kinds of companies that have a strategic advantage of being here in the community. Um, so it's a, it's a higher level um, position. A lot of it is going to be, um, I, I would almost call it sales work, but uh, it, it, it's the data analysis uh, and the support to those clusters and going out and meeting new, new businesses. Uh, that person will also be helping existing businesses or expanding businesses with permit expediting. Uh, it's very difficult to walk in off the street and know what department to go to first and do I need to go, you know, the zoning and then there's site plan review and am I in the right corridor and um, how do I get a license to do X, Y, or Z? So we'll be creating a, 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 a some permit expediting um, capability in, in that department, or in that staff person, excuse me. Who's doing that work now? Um, all, you, all you just mentioned. Some everybody, and whoever answers the phone first, mm -hmm. um, if they are calling our office, um, they usually get a pretty good response with between Shane and Pam and uh, Megan in where to go and what to do. If they call other offices, they may not be as technically savvy as, as Pam is. Savvy? Savvy. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chair. Thank you, Councillor Follow. Yep, just two quick questions. Yes, sir. Uh, good evening, sir. Um, good evening. You know I'm usually pretty direct, so I have the first question is uh, there have been, I would say, two or three occasions when you have shut down your office and you people have had off-site meetings or I think one was an award ceremony and consequently residents have to go to either DPW or down to the mayor's mm -hmm. office. And, and I guess my question is, Given the fact that you handle planning board issues and all sorts of issues, should we not always have someone in that office during normal business hours? We generally have someone in that office at, at all times. Um, we may, um, for example, the, the technical review committee, we all meet downstairs, but there's somebody in the building department who knows where we are and, and how to get a hold of us. We did win an award and uh, from the uh, Massachusetts Planning Association, yeah. so we all went to that, but um, we were able to have the building department cover us for that day. Uh, it doesn't happen often that we're all out of the office, but, um, but, but shouldn't you always, I mean, during normal business hours, if, if we're a half a billion dollar corporation and the planning department is as important as it I, seems I, I to agree. be, shouldn't we have someone there? Um, or arrange for someone from another department to come up and answer phones or at least be prepared to greet someone that might walk in, take time off it, to get out. Well, the, the building department does do that for us. Uh, we work very closely with them. I, so I know you do. They, they cover our, our systems. Um, but yes, there should be somebody there. Okay, and the second question is, uh, and as you probably know, uh, City Hall is like Washington, D.C. There are all sorts of information swirling around. Is this $80,000 a year job designed to uh, be given to someone whose state contract, the TDI fellow's contract is expiring? Is it your intention and the mayor's intention no, it's to not. bring him on staff? No. So this is a wide open, purely objective, Correct. everyone can compete for this, women, minorities, anyone who's qualified. Anybody who is willing to relocate to the city of Brockton, yes. Within a year. Correct. Yes. And then the, the last thing um, I talked with Councilor Cruz briefly, I thought the Community Preservation Act was either a one or two or three percent surcharge on a real estate tax bill. Is there, th there is another mechanism that you can tax something at the time a deed transfer is effectuated, is that correct? I, I have to go back and do some research on it. I thought it was a fee on the transfer of, of title. Okay, because I, I, I can't that find it, that. It's been a long time since I've dealt with that. 
okay. or even looked into it. Yeah. So I, I, it's not it. something I have off the top of my head. I apologize. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, anyone else? Uh, Councillor Dorincourt, do you have a follow-up? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. May, um, yes, sir. with this uh, potentially somewhat $80,000 a new position, uh, my question to you is that uh, when you were about to give this job, right, did you know this position was going to be important? And that's number one. The second question is that when did you realize this was a position that your department yes. truly need? Most people and are. what is the responsibility of that as opposed to what you've been doing in the past couple of years? So did this position somewhat prevent you from doing your job accordingly? And let's say that hypothetically that money was there to actually give you. Would this position make your life much easier and you got to changing the face of downtown? I know this is a yeah, lot of could you Could you ask your first question again because I, I, I missed part of that. I apologize. You, you missed part of it. Uh, let's see if I can do it the way that I did it. Rewind the tape. When you were, uh, when you were giving this position. Yes, sir. Uh, did you have this position in mind? Uh, yes, we did. Did you ask for it? We have been asking for it. Um, it is very hard for us um, to it, it, to ask for more employees when we've been you know you look at the fire department, police department, the schools, um, especially in the the last couple of years when we've been laying off um, teachers, it, we felt it was difficult to come forward. Um, so. So yes, these are positions that, that we've wanted to add. Um, these are not the only positions that we want to add, but these are the only positions that we can afford to add at this point in time. Okay, that, that's a, the a city our size should have a, a larger planning department, but right now we are running from pillar to post, um, trying to get projects done. Um, how it happens is um, amazing that, that we are able to produce what we can with the staff we have. And if we have these additional positions, we'll be able to do significantly more business attraction, business support, um, planning activities throughout the community and not just um, focusing in one or two districts. So you mean that by, by having this position, um the face of Brockton, which is your job in terms of like beautifications downtown, obviously, of, of my colleague just mentioned um, Belmont. So by having this position, uh, can I conclude that the face of Brockton will be different? And that's number one. And, yes. and number two, uh, number two. So because you do not have that person as we speak, I would assume it makes your job somewhat um, ineffective would this it, be a true it, statement it's difficult to do what we do yeah i don't want to say difficult i gotta you know choose my word very carefully i mean by not having this position it somewhat make your job we are ineffective. crippled if that's the word. it it it's we could do i mean we if you see what we've done in the last five years with the staff we have it's it's incredible, and I'm very proud of the team that we have and the partners that we have um, working on, on Brockton. If we had additional staff, there's, there's other neighborhoods that we could be working on. Uh, there's other commercial corridors that we could be working on. Uh, we could be uh, more involved in working with DPW on transportation planning, structure planning, which is something that we're you know, not doing right now. And, and um, you know, we added Megan uh, Shave last year as a conservation agent, and she's working with us on uh, park planning, but there's so much more that we could do as a community had, if we have the staff. Yeah, but I mean, what, it's like, it's not really the staff that somewhat concern me. I mean, I would assume that, I mean, you do have a staff, and obviously, you know, they, they are doing um, their job, and, and obviously they are getting paid their, their job. job. You know, well, they are doing their job, and you know the taxpayers are paying for that. So, what I would like to understand is that based on your statement, it seems like the reason why we haven't been able to move the way the state should continue move forward is because you do not have these two positions. Would that be a true statement or a fair statement to your department? I think we've made incredible progress in the last uh, few years, and I think we can make even more progress uh, with the additional staff. I mean, right now we have you know $150 million worth of projects happening in downtown uh, that are either under construction or are permitted and should start construction in the next um, six to 12 months. Uh, imagine how much more could be going on in Campello and in Montello, on Belmont, 
um, and, and throughout the city if, if we could expand our focus? I mean, you know, it's like, um, and obviously I, you know, I, I didn't study uh, development in college in regard to how do you change, um, you know, the face of the city. But one of my observations is that, especially uh, given the time that I've been in Brockton, so ever since I've been here, um, you know, I, I, can, I, can, I can conclude that. I mean, I think Main Street, uh, downtown Brockton, hasn't changed at all in regard to bringing business down there. And obviously, this is your job to actually not only reaching out to them, but also give them a reason to come down here. So let's say that, again, you know, you got these two positions. We can assume we're going to see more business coming down, down Brockton in your department. I think we'll see more businesses throughout the city, yes. So we will see more business throughout the city of Brockton by having these two positions. It, it frees up uh, capacity for us to do that, yes. So the reason why, this is very interesting, the reason why as we speak we do not have the business that I would expect is because of these two positions. Is that true? Councillor. Look, the reason why I live in where I live is because I haven't won the lottery yet. So it's kind of hard for Mr. Uh, President, thank you. Thank you, Mr. May. I appreciate it. No, thank you, Mr. President. I'm sure that, you know, he basically has said that he hopes to bring more business in, and I think that's how we can need to focus on it. But <coughs> and at the same time, let's just not forget why are we here. We're here to discuss the budget. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Council President. Sullivan, you I do have one quick follow-up uh, for Mr. Yes, Clarkson. Sir. To actually oh, Mr. Clarkson. Mistake. So, so I opened up the conversation about the Main Street. Uh, Rob was nice enough to give me his, his you know, view of it. Um, Councilor Yaneri questioned the 40 grand. Um, my question is this, how can the city of Brockton hire a city employee and get it subsidized from a non-city department? It's a quasi-agency. How does that work under law? Because if it's a school department paying for a city department, that's fine. But the BRA is, is not a city department. So I don't know how you can get any compensation from them to include to a salary that actually would benefit the person for retirement and get benefits as a city employee. I don't, I don't think you can do it under the law. I would suggest that there are a couple of different ways you could do it. Um, one of them is uh, all municipalities in the Commonwealth have donation accounts where a private entity or a quasi can actually provide money to a municipality for use of, for a specific purpose. I don't think it could be for salary purposes. In I, my I'm humble happy, opinion, I'm but maybe we should run out, by the city solicitor because it was already stated that they're gonna subsidize a percentage and if that can be done, great, but I just question the legality because I think that there's a, uh, it's a gray area because sure. they're not a Brockton department. Got it. I believe it can be done, okay. but I'm happy to have that, 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 awesome. that discussion with you, with, Thank without you. a doubt. An example of that, though, is if I remember the uh, Veteran Services has a employee that is paid for by the VA hospital. Um, yeah, but I don't believe that they're a, uh, a, they're, not a city employee. they're not a city employee. It's not a city employee. No, they're a federal employee under the VA. Um, okay. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Yeah, Councilor, just for, uh, as a point of information, but I think we also are running into that situation in the mayor's office where one of the, uh, I think the communications person in the mayor's office yeah. is paid for with a grant right. from, uh, from BCA. Right, from Cable. So that's probably office. something else that needs to be looked into yeah. as a possibility as well. It's, it's not just, okay, but, but I think it just needs to have further valuation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Yeah. Mr. May, thank you very much. Good evening. Thank you. Uh, number 10. Auditor, Mary Lynn Peters Chu, City Auditor. Madam Peters Chu, uh, welcome back. How was Thank your, you. How was your vacation? Uh, no, your. Uh, <laughs> My conference. Your conference. It was very informative. Yeah. Yes. And I'm glad to be back. I missed you all. Um, okay, so I'll start off with the mission statement. The mission of the auditing department is to protect the fiduciary interests of the city by providing independent, timely oversight of the city's finances and to ensure that the financial transactions are executed legally, efficiently, and effectively in accordance with Massachusetts general laws. 
and there are a whole bunch of services. So review and process all payments, including payroll and vendor bills, evaluates the city system of internal controls and advises the city employees, management, and the city council on ways to improve those controls, performs financial and performance audits for the city and the Brockton Public Schools, examines all accounts, books, and records of the city that reflect transactions involving the financial activities of the city, investigate the legality of the above expenditures, consulting city ordinances, silver silver regulations, U.S. Treasury regulation, contracts, various laws, and mayor's directives. Check all financial transactions with department heads, mayor, city clerk, and city council. Prepare monthly balance sheets, revenue, and expenditure reports of the city. Prepare the annual financial report containing schedule of receipts, expenditures, balance sheet, funds, and cash schedules. Ensures annual IRS wage and non-employee compensation forms are accurate and complete assures that all financial transactions are undertaken in accordance with federal, state, and local law, monitors adherence to all applicable regulations, contracts, and city policies, as well as compliance to generally accept acceptable accounting principles. So that's a lot of information. So basically to break it down, for those of you at home, my department can be broken down into three sub-departments, payroll, accounts payable, and auditing. Payroll is pretty self-explanatory. My department audits payroll submitted by each department and we process it accordingly. Accounts payable is where we audit requests for payments which come in the form of purchase orders, POs, and process accordingly. In both of those categories, if something is improper, excessive, or illegal, I step in and I refuse payment. I essentially have to say no, and people do not like to hear the word no. <laughs> and some of those people do not like to hear the word no from someone who looks like me. Regardless, racism and sexism is not going to stop me from doing my job. I follow all federal and state laws, tax laws, city ordinances, DOR regulations, uniform municipal accounting system guidelines, governmental accounting standard board guidelines, and generally accepted accounting principles. There are rules that I follow and must enforce. And as we all know, no one is above the law. In terms of auditing, my staff and I audit every financial transaction. In addition, I'm the liaison between the city and our outside auditing firm, Clifton Larson Allen. My department and CLA work together to create the financial statements of the city, and as you can tell, my department does a lot. So um, I have an amazing staff behind me, and I appreciate their work, and I value each of them as individuals and all that they do. I could never do all that I do without them. I want to also thank the mayor, all the department heads, and all of you for your continued support, and that being said, I'll answer any questions you might have about my budget. Thank you, Auditor. Uh, any questions for the City Auditor? Uh, let's, go this, let's go to Brian Court first and then uh, Fowell and... Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's not really a question, but actually a comment. Uh, I would like to you know, publicly thank you and your staff uh, for well, I've been doing an amazing job on behalf of our people. And I thank think you. so far in regard to the relationship that we have ever since I got elected. So whenever I call your office or whenever I want to have a meeting, you are always there no matter what. And I, I, I think that you know you are one of the most important people that we have in regard to head departments giving the responsibility of your job. And I know it's not an easy job you know, to be the auditor, but I, 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 I commend you for having the courage not only to do, your do, to do your job, but also to do this job accordingly. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Thank Madam you. Auditor. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Borgard, followed by Powell. Borgard? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. First of all, thank you, uh, Mel, and for all you do. And uh, two things. Um, this is, it's a separation cost. Are you losing, uh, leaving, someone's retiring on us? Uh, someone has told me that they have the potential to do so. I want to be safe and make sure that we have the money available to do so. Okay, because you have w many wonderful people in that I do, department. don't I? And they're all wicked young, so I can't imagine they'd be <laughs> retiring. So, but anyway, and the other thing is, is this quality and technical control, um, is that like, um, I guess I was trying to figure out 
how you would interpret it because I think of um, you as, when you said the auditing, mm -hmm. and is it, so how does that break down in this case? So that individual, okay, so that position was created a while, a while ago, and the person who held that position retired in 2017, and to um, basically save budget costs, we eliminated the funding for that position last year. So I'm asking for it again. That person primarily does a lot of different projects that I will sign, um, will help me with the financial statements for the city. Um, and just has a, a really good understanding of MUNIS, which is our financial system that we use and that I oversee. Mm -hmm. And basically, that's what that person would be doing. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Fowler. You know, I actually, I don't have a question, but I, I, uh, I want to remind seat. everyone that's the most important position in the city. <laughs> we have a $450 million mm -hmm. budget, and this young woman and her staff is going to be responsible for making sure that it's paid on time, paid legally, paid in the right amount, and paid to the right people. And I hope you always have an independent streak. I don't care if you have to tell the mayor or one of us or the city solicitor or anyone else to take a hike. That is your statutory responsibility. And I, I would hope that all 11 of us would always back you or whomever we happen to have as auditor. So uh, I, I need to get that on the record because you do have a tough job. I know how department heads like to kind of meander around and well, you know, I tell you what, you take care of this invoice and then I'll take care of that and we'll, we'll do this and that. But you know, go by the law, do what you have to do because we're getting up into big money now, half That's a billion right. dollars. Mm -hmm. And I, I commend you for having the courage to put your foot down and to do what you have to do. And, I, and I'm not, it's no hyperbole. The auditor makes sure that whatever money comes in and whatever money we appropriate is spent in conformity with the law. And, and uh, God bless you. Thank I, I you. wish you the best as we continue to see these budgets get bigger. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you, Councillor. Um, Councillor Yaneri. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> and, and I'm just going to ditto some, some of the same comments that Councillor Fowler just made um, because I think it's very, very important uh, the position that you have and the, the staff that you uh, also have working with you. And uh, again, as I did some few months ago, I do want to thank you and the staff for all you did for me when I was Council President and we worked together as a team. And I'm, and I'm sure you're doing the same thing with the new council president as well. Some people don't realize that, you know, when you are the council president that, you know, once something's read at city council and it goes into finance, that now that becomes your job and his or her job to make sure that the finance committee does what they're supposed to do and do it the correct way. So um, I appreciate that and, um, and keep up the good work. And uh, I'm a straight shooter, so I'm like you. <laughs> That's why some people don't like me, but I'm not here for I'm I'm not here for you know a, a contest of you know what my personality is about. I'm here to work for the people of the city of Brockton, and, right. and I, I think you are too. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, anyone else? Uh, Madam, I too want to say something. Um, I am, um, as you can tell, I'm a little different as well. <laughs> I look a little different, sound a little different, came from a different place. Uh, this city can be a tough city at times. But I think it's important for you to hold your head high. And as Council Fowell said, you know, you've got supporters here because you are our clerk. Mm -hmm. And this body will support you. So as long as you do the right thing. Thank you. And I, I would, um, uh, it's a shame that we are living in 2019 and that there are individuals within this city building that actually feel the same way uh, as what you said in your statement. And, it, and they should be ashamed of themselves. But at least so that you know. You've got some support here, and uh, please know that you've got friends in this building. Thank All you. Right. Uh, number 11, please. Auditor, mailroom, Mary Lynn Peters Chu, city auditor. Okay, so the mailroom, I oversee that too, and it's for all the bulk still, mail, the mail that we- Do still have a mailroom? We do have a mailroom, it's downstairs. Um, <laughs> whenever we, don't, we can't meet in here and we have meetings, we have them downstairs in the basement. <laughs> yeah, it's there. <laughs> Go ahead, I'm sorry. I didn't no, it's okay. Um, so um, we do all the mailing for the city. Um, when there are large health insurance mailings, we do that. School side, all of that. So that's what this is for. Uh, any questions for the uh, mail? I mean, are you guys surprised that we're still mailing things around? <laughs> no? Uh, thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Next item, please. Auditor, telephone, Mary Lynn Peters Chu, city auditor. What are those? 
Telephone? <laughs> so this is for all the telephone system in City Hall and in Montauk Road to help connect us. And yeah. that's that is. Any questions about the telephone? No. No? No questions about the telephone. Is that that's a good thing. No questions about the telephone. <laughs> Rotary phone? <laughs> Next item, please. Retirement. Non-contributory. Mary Lynn Peters Chu, City Auditor. Okay, so the non-contributory retirement provides a pension to the pensioner that makes no contribution. The employer, the City of Brockton, makes all contributions on the pension. Pen oh, I can't even speak. The pensioner's behalf. We only have one retiree still alive that falls under this category, and that is for her. Wow. Any questions? Yeah. Uh, anybody concerned about the retirement? <laughs> Going a couple more years. A couple more years. Twice. Oh. Oh. Yeah, right. Whatever. Mm -hmm. exactly. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. And again, again, I uh, thank you for all that you do. I, I hope you had a great conference. It wasn't a vacation, it was a conference. It was a conference, yes. See you on the 17th. Thank you. <laughs> Madam Clerk, the last item on the list. Is it there? Finance. Troy Clarkson, CFO. Mr. Clarkson, haven't seen you all week. How you been? Yeah. Been very well, thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Bonsoir. Bonsoir. <laughs> Bonsoir. <laughs> uh, bon <laughs> Je suis très heureux d'être ici. There we go. So we got some French. I think Shelly is. I can myself and get. <laughs> so uh, it's my pleasure to be here and present uh, the finance budget. My first as your chief financial officer, uh, as you know, but for the benefit of the public. Uh, the chief financial officer position was created by chapter 324 of the acts of 1990. Uh, there was one incumbent uh, since then. Uh, Mr. Condon, as you know, uh, has retired but remains um, a wonderful resource for us and, uh, and his institutional knowledge is invaluable. So we're grateful that uh, Jay continues to be part of the team, which is reflected in the budget. I'll briefly read some of the services that we provide in accordance with, uh, with that special act of the legislature. We coordinate, administer, and supervise all financial services and activities of the city, develop uniform systems for all financial planning and operations in all departments, including the school department, boards, commissions, agencies, and other units of city government. We review proposed contracts and obligations with a term uh, of impact in excess of one year, manage relationships with outside financial agencies, oversee the, the debt and present presentations to allow for successful bond sales, analyze and recommend all capital spending in accordance with city ordinance, directly participate and advise on labor contract bargaining, including school unions, administer risk management, and provide assistance in all matters related to municipal finance affairs. So it's obviously, as you well know, uh, a very broad set of responsibilities, uh, one in which I'm both pleased and uh, eager to fulfill. Before I uh, open up the actual finance department budget to any questions, I would like to address just a couple of issues that have come up uh, with your indulgence, yes, Mr. Please. President. The issue of the budget format that Councillor Sullivan raised, uh, I actually fully concur with that. So I, I uh, arrived in, in late February, and uh, the amazing work of Karen Praval, our budget director, uh, enabled us to have this budget complete uh, by the deadline. There are some formatting issues. We tried to stay true to the previous format as best as we could, but I will tell you that uh, our hope and our desire is to produce a budget for next year that's compliant with the Government Finance Officers Association, which is something I've undertaken in the past. Karen and I already talked extensively about it. What I'd like to do is work with the Finance Committee uh, and perhaps on a periodic basis, maybe monthly or quarterly, set aside some time at your finance committee meetings to talk about things like how the budget looks and revenue updates and so that we can really share some broader information that's not just specific to an issue that's on the agenda, but gives the council and the public the chance to really have a deeper understanding of the finances of the like city. Uh, and so I think as we move forward, get some feedback from the council as to what you want the budget to look like, right? As the mayor said the other night, the budget tells a story. And we want to make sure that the document that we prepare is telling the story that you want to be heard to the taxpayers. Uh, as someone who has worked in 
uh, several communities. In fact, I think every community in which I've worked uh, has adopted the Community Preservation Act. Uh, I will join my colleague, Mr. May, in endorsing it. Uh, this beautiful building uh, could certainly benefit, as, as you've heard. The amazing work that Jim Kasiri talked about last night that he and his team have done could only be enhanced if we had CPA funds available to us to, uh, to, to really uh, give our historic buildings the, uh, the attention they deserve. And uh, you can actually bond um, and pay principal and interest with CPA funds. And, and so that's, uh, it, it's a, a, a real opportunity to, uh, to invest in some of our historic resources. With that, I'm happy to answer any questions you have specifically on, on our budget. Uh, thank you, Mr. Clarkson. Uh, Councillor Fowell. Actually, Mr. Clarkson, I'm, I'm going to say to you and to Ms. Preville and your staff a lot of what I said about the auditor, um, and I worked very closely with Mr. Condon. You have a statutory responsibility to analyze what's being requested for an appropriation, whether it will uh, have a short-term or long-term effect on our ability to provide services, and I hope you, I hope all of you maintain your independence. I know it's hard in a political environment, and I know the mayor is responsible for your reappointment, but if we don't have people with integrity who will do the right thing, then all of the work that we do here is really for nothing. And so I want you to know I'll stand behind you, I'll stand behind your staff, and do what's right, and don't get pushed around, and if you do, uh, unless they're bigger than me, I'm not worried. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Clark. Uh, thank you, Councilor Fowler. Uh, anyone else? Uh, Councilor Borgard. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, thank you. Um, who's leaving? <coughs> Someone that says separation costs, or did you just happen to put that in there? <coughs> no, those separation costs, as I understand it, uh, for Mr. Condon were extended over oh, multiple okay. years. I thought about, so, I thought that, but I was just As just far as I know, none of our staff intends to uh, Okay, because you've got some pretty young ones too. And this financial analyst, it says vacant funded. This was. Yes. I'm sorry, I'm on page uh, 130. Yeah. So that's a position. Uh, and again, so I came pretty uh, late to this budget process. Mm -hmm. It's a position that has been approved and has been funded in the past. Uh, I would just ask for your indulgence to give me the opportunity to really understand uh, all of the roles uh, in the office and whether or not uh, we intend to fill that position. But for right now, I can tell you that given the scope and complexity of the, the, the high-level planning work that we do, for instance, just last night we spoke about utility rates and coming up with a plan. Sure. You know, uh, Andrew from our staff uh, is a tremendous yeah. resource. Uh, and, and so having uh, the opportunity for another financial analyst to do that deep dive uh, w w I think would be valuable. But I will commit to you that I, until I really have the opportunity to do uh, a deeper analysis of the needs and the roles of everyone in the office, I, I won't fill that. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Council Councilor Yenier. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, uh, one of my questions was about the separation costs, but you've already answered that. The, um, the other comment I just want to make is, um, and to my fellow colleagues as, as well as when we were talking last night about the um, Shaw Center and the insurance and, and that, et cetera, I did bring up the um, copy that I did have and I did uh, give it to uh, our Chief Financial Officer uh, today and he's going to be flushing out that because he had not seen it yet. So um, I guess that's what happens, as I said, when when you keep some of the history, so, um, but he's gonna flush that out and you're gonna get back to us and just let us know about the, uh, the insurance and how that is all, all covered in, in itself. So I appreciate that. And the, um, the last comment I just wanna make is, um, I do wanna appreciate um, the, the budget coming on in on time and coming to us on time and, and being able to have it at home for, for eight or nine, 10 days, I think was, uh, was a very good, uh, good idea. And uh, I commend the uh, council president on that as well for working um, towards you know, doing that. And at the same token, I, I do wanna just say that um, again, councilors, when uh, interviews were held and I was sitting on the um, interview board, uh, it was a very difficult task um, when we were trying to find somebody to, to take Mr. Condon's place. And 
Uh, it's a tough, it was a tough pair of shoes, but in all uh, said and done after all candidates, I do think that Mr. Clarkson, uh, he's gonna do an outstanding job for the city and I know he's gonna work in the best interest of the city and, and the people here. Um, and, I, and I think he's gonna come up with um, newer ideas as we move forward because that's what it's all about. We gotta, we gotta keep going ahead and, and not backwards and uh, I, I think that's gonna happen with uh, he and, uh, and Chris, our, our good uh, budget director there as well. She's, she's done an outstanding job too. So, and I think uh, all in all, your, your staff does a great job as well. So appreciate it and thank you for uh, all you did uh, in preparing this budget. Appreciate it, thanks. Thank, thank you. you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Councillor, Councillor De Castro. Thank you. Mr. Clarkson, thank you. We're reaching the end of the line, thank God, huh? I'm looking at page 130, and I see that the total salary for all of the people listed, including yourself and the vacant funded position, is 481,460. But then when I go to the summary box below that, it shows for full time 536,060. And so it's a difference of 139,200. Why? I believe um, that that was, if you look in the, the part-time salary line, thank you for pointing that out. Uh, the part-time salary of 54,600 is uh, an amount anticipated to fulfill the contract for the part-time work of Mr. Condon. Uh, I believe that if you add the 481, 460, I'm just doing the math in my head here. That uh, may have been double counted there. So uh, I, I think that was just, uh, I'll defer to Karen, but I think when the budget was put together, that was just a, a clerical mistake that was made. So you can, you can actually uh, reduce that amount by 54,600. Okay, on the next page, page 131, I see the 481 figure as your department request and the mayor's recommendation is the higher number. But then underneath, the part-time salary is there, 54.6. Right, so I think what happened, and I'll take full responsibility for that, but when the information was being entered into Munis by the staff, I think it was just inadvertently entered twice. Remember the memo that I sent you with the, with the budget, yes. that sometimes the, when that mayor recommended is larger than the department requested, that does not necessarily mean that it was an additional spending request by the mayor, in most cases, after the budget was closed in Munis, additional funds were requested. And so when we executed the contract with Mr. Condon to provide additional support, uh, that amount was added in. And so I, I'm, I'm pretty sure, Karen, am I correct? Yeah, so it was just an inadvertent mistake that it was added in both lines. Okay, and so there's one part-time employee and that's correct. Mr. Condon at 54.6. Right. Okay, how long does that contract last? What's its term? Uh, I'll get a copy of it for you uh, off the top of my head. Uh, I, it was, uh, I don't remember. Uh, if it, it's okay. I, 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 it may have been open-ended. It was just a consulting contract at a specific rate. Um, as a retiree, he has the ability to work uh, and, and earn. So he's paid as an employee. That's why it shows up in here yes. and not uh, as a contractor and he's limited by the rules of the retirement to only work a certain amount of hours. 960 um, hours. So I, I believe that the contract just specifies all of that and is not for finite period because he's an employee and, and not a contractor, but I'll gladly provide a copy of that consulting okay. agreement Thank to you. you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Borgard, did you want to say something? No, I'm all set. You're all set? Councillor Darrenkirk. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I would like to thank uh, Ms. Bival for taking the time to answer all my questions, and I know some of the times I got a little bit nervous about you know some of the numbers that I see uh, within the budget. But she's been you know so great to me. You know, whenever I have a question, and some of you can observe, I keep on going back and forth. Uh, so for her to actually explain it to me, so I can ask my question accordingly on behalf of the taxpayer. So thank you so much, you know, for taking the time to do that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Cruz. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Clarkson, I'm a little confused on the separation cost question. That you say those are for Mr. Condon's separation, but he is gone in this fiscal year. I so thought, I, 
I'll, I'll double check on that. I, I believe that's what it was. We also may have an employee that, that's retiring. So uh, I, I, let me double check on that and if get back to you. If you could, because uh, if it's Mr. Conan's, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but we can't push a, a, a function of this fiscal year into next fiscal year. No, but I can tell you that I've executed separation agreements before uh, and that we've paid out separation costs over a number of fiscal years. So you're right, you can't pay for one year's liability uh, in another fiscal year, but you certainly can execute an agreement where the responsibility is paid for in multiple years. Uh, if you could give me some information, because uh, uh, that's very, to, to be honest with you, that goes to the very essence of why the state made us create your job back in the early 90s was the mayor at the time was pushing obligations into the next fiscal year consistently and it was my understanding at the time is you can't push a financial obligation into the next fiscal year. Um, that seems to me what you're saying we're doing here and that worries me if that's what it is. I don't, don't know why I'm sure Mr. Conant's I mean, separation costs would be buybacks of sick time and all and anything like that, and unused vacation time. I don't know what, I don't know why we would still owe him into next year. Um, it just, it, it concerns me. Yeah, I'll gladly check on that and get back to you. Yeah, if you could, please. Uh, because, and then, I mean, that twi twice entering that 54,600 concerns me too with uh, other other line items where we didn't catch that, uh, you know, to, uh, you know, we find very little in the budget to cut and we have reached a point in, in our city government that we operate so tightly we don't cut very often, but it, the idea of, of mistakes of $54,000 here and there can add up to, if there were three of them, that's 150000 That You know, it, it worries me a little bit. And I know it's a difficult issue, <clears throat> particularly where you you were coming in late into this budget process, but it worries me a little bit to see that. And it very much concerns me about the idea of, and maybe it's just something I don't understand, pushing off the separation costs into another year. Because that, to me, is pushing an obligation from this fiscal year into next year's, which I believe is not something we can do. So let me address that in, in, in a couple of different ways. I think the fact that uh, there was a, a an error in the entry into Munis, again, I'll state that I take full responsibility Never for that. happens, I, uh, I get that. I just well, but l let me clearly state that uh, it, ultimately every page in this budget I'm responsible for. Oh, sure. Uh, and, and so, you know, we strive for excellence and to have no errors. Uh, the fact that I came in the end of February is, is not an excuse. So, but what I mentioned earlier, I think, what would be very helpful and constructive is if we spent time throughout the fiscal year uh, really getting into more detail about some of the issues we talked about tonight and last night, the issue we talked about, about uh, the recreation and golf being a hybrid between an enterprise fund, which it is, uh, and getting a subsidy from the general fund. That's, I can tell you from my experience, a very unorthodox way to fund it, mm -hmm. but that's the way it's been done here for a very long time. Right. So there are lots of those issues that I've, I've encountered just in a short amount of time. And let me be clear, I've said publicly and privately, uh, because my perspective may be different, that doesn't mean things weren't done the right way. Uh, but I think in my experience, I've learned uh, how to approach things. We had a very positive call with Standard & Poor's, our rating agency last week, and I committed to them to putting in place some uh, actual written financial policies, uh, which they see as very important. Uh, and so one of the things that uh, is a real opportunity for the city is to develop some clear written policies about how we do things here, because a lot of that's not documented. And so I think when we have the opportunity to have a much clearer picture of how the financial operations occur and what steps we take and what the workflow is uh, to produce people's paychecks and to get uh, a budget put together and to, uh, to borrow money, uh, I think I'd like to sit here a year from now and look back on 
a much clearer picture of how operations are done so that we don't have uh, things like this occur. So I'm, I really look forward to working closely with the council uh, in, in that regard. But uh, on that specific issue, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll make sure we, uh, we get some information to you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Council Cruz. Uh, anyone else has anything else? Thank you, Mr. Clarkson. Well, councillors, uh, I guess we have hit the uh, end of the road. Uh, I just want to remind everybody, and I think the point that uh, Council Cruz just brought up uh, kind of validates the fact that we should hold off on uh, cutting the budget so we don't do it the same night that we're actually de deliberating the budget. Because this way here, I think it allows us some time to contact some departments, kind of uh, run some things uh, with each other in the sense. And then when we come together on the special meeting that we will hold, I think it makes it a lot easier for everybody just to come uh, you know, and dive right in. <clears throat> so we're going to hold that special meeting on, um, on Ju uh, June 17th at 6.30 p.m. I think we, a half hour should be more than enough for us to go through this stuff if we do our due diligence and go through the things that we need to do. And if we have to hold off on uh, FinCom for a little bit until we finish what we need to finish, then we'll do so. Okay. Uh, but I think it's important for us to do that. And then it does allow us to have one more uh, council meeting on the 24th in case we got to do something in terms of adjusting uh, the budget one way or the other. Uh, as, I, as we conclude tonight, I just want to thank uh, Troy and Karen for being here, Eric, uh, Anne-Marie, and Mel, who was not on vacation but actually at a conference. <laughs> um, the, the folks from BCA, especially Aaron, who's uh, – uh, doing his due diligence inside there to make sure that we look presentable and, and not scaring the, uh, the citizens too much. Uh, but thank you for being here, our uh, wonderful counselor who's always here helping us out, and of course all you folks for putting up with me. Uh, I've been around for, this is my fifth budget, but it's the first time under the dome. You know, and it, 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 you know what, the pictures are different from up here. You know, uh, so I, I want to uh, thank you folks for putting up with my uh, uh, guff here and there, but uh, you know, nothing is uh, meant to disrespect or push anybody beyond, but you know what, I'm glad we stayed within uh, the limits of what we were supposed to do because that's what people expect us to do. You know? So um, again, thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, thank you for running three consecutive uh, professional evenings. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you sir. With that being said, having no further business for the people of the city of Brockton, we are adjourned. Okay.